Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about for loops. Right, so we talked about um, last time arrays, and how we can store multiple values in a single object called an array. Right, That way we don't have to say have 20 or 30 different variables uh, of things that are related. Right, So say we have a whole bunch of grades we want to store in one spot. Instead of having 20 variables for 20 different grades, we can have one array of 20 grades. Right, so let's see how we can easily move through an array without having to say manually index uh, each element. And that's what for loops are for. And there's many different ways that we can write for loops, uh, especially in more modern C++. So we can declare an initialize array, right? So we'll go ahead and use uniform initialization. So we'll create an array of integers and we want five of them. So remember array is a fixed size container. So we have to specify both a type and a size and we'll call it A1, and we'll go ahead and initialize it with uh, the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the first and one of the most uh, intuitive for loops to have is this range-based for loop. right? So what this allows us to do is easily access all the elements in the array without having to worry about indexing at all. right? So uh, if we look at kind of the semantics of what this is, right? so we print out uh, range-based, right? so we'll have it prints for all of these arrays and how we traverse them. Um, and so we have this for auto i, colon a1 and this can really easily be interpreted as for each i in a1 right so i will just take on the value of all the values in the array right and this for loop basically has it so that we iterate over all the values so first we'll access you know in this case zero then one then two then three then four on each iteration loop so we don't need to worry about how big the array is we'll end up going through all the elements and so for this case, we'll go ahead and just print out all the elements and then print a new line at the very end, right? And a lot of times we use the auto keyword just because the compiler already knows what types are in A1 because we specified it up here, right? Inside of array, we said this is an array of integers. So the compiler is a lot less likely to make mistakes than we are. So using something like auto here is usually a really good choice. But we don't have to just rely on these range-based for loops. We can also have, uh, we can also use iterators, right? So the first thing that immediately comes up is, you know, what's an iterator, right? So iterators are just a special type of object that we use to access STL containers, right? So uh, an array is a STL container, right? And so STL stands for the Standard Template Library. And in this case, right? So you know, we'll go into templates in a later episode, but you can see uh, basically what. Uh, these containers are and what we mean by template uh, just by kind of thinking you know we didn't have to put int here we could have put float we could have put double uh, we could have put uh, char for character right so basically we have a container that can be uh, a whole bunch of uh, different kinds of containers we can have a container for integers a container for floats doubles uh, in this case it's an, ar uh, an array of ints an array of doubles an array of floats uh, so when we're talking about the standard template library we're talking about things that uh, are in a very general form, right? They're templated, uh, so we can kind of paste in here, hey, I want in an integer array, I just have to specify it's an integer. And in this case, I also have to specify the size because it's a fixed size container. Okay, so again, iterators are just special objects that we use to access um, elements inside of STL containers, and we can iterate through them and dereference them uh, to access their value. So the iterator itself is not the value, right? But it basically says, I know where the value is, and so when we dereference an iterator, we get the underlying value or the underlying uh, data. Uh, and the other nice thing about this is we, it, it's also pretty safe, right, in terms of a programmer. So again, uh, we'll use auto types here because we don't always want to remember, hey, what's the type of iterator I need for this particular uh, STL container, right? So in this case, uh, it's going to be an iterator for a standard vector of ints, right? but that's kind of a lot to write. So we can just use auto here. And then we can use begin to say, I want the iterator to the first element, right? So begin just says, okay, I'll get an iterator to the first element, but there's also methods inside uh, for arrays as well uh, that we can get these iterators. So we don't have to do say begin a1. We can also do a1.begin, right? And this calls a method that returns the begin iterator. And that's the iterator that points to the first element but we can really concisely just put begin. And then we say while iterator is less than n. So we can compare iterators and see uh, how they relate in terms of order, right? So in this case, the end iterator points to one past the last element, which is why we say uh, this iterator, it, 
is less than n, right? We don't want the element one past the last element, right? So we want to cap it as less than, not less than or equal to. And likewise, we don't have to say end here. We can say, you know, a1.end, right? And that will return the iterator uh, to one past the last element. And likewise, when we go ahead and do, you know, it++, this doesn't do a normal, you know, plus equals one. It moves the iterator along to the point to the iterator that's for the next element in the container, right? So this isn't, say, adding one, but it's moving the iterators over. So again, uh, inside of here, we'll go ahead and do C out, uh, and we'll go ahead and print out the element stored at IT, right? So this is where the dereferencing is. So, um, so sometimes we use this star to denote multiplication. So if I do, you know, five star six, we're talking about multiplying five and six. But when I have, have something like an iterator uh, like this, what I can do is I can dereference it. So this is also the dereference operator, which basically says, you know, you're not the data itself, but you know where the data is. So go ahead and go get that data, right? So we'll go ahead and go through the, uh, the vector this way. And again, we'll print out all the elements. So this does the exact same thing as the other loop. Uh, but we have a little bit more control here, so we don't have to print everything. You know, we, we can say, instead of having, you know, from auto it equals begin, while it is less than end, we can also say while it is less than begin of a1, you know, plus five, right? Or plus three or plus two, right? And so this plus two doesn't literally mean to add two. It's the same thing as this it plus plus. It says move the iterator over two spots. So we have a bit more control in this kind of loop where we don't have to uh, go over the entire array, right? And again, it's a lot safer because we're working with iterators, right? Instead of uh, having to manually control where we're indexing. So we can use things like begin and end, which are very intuitive. So just like we have uh, these iterators, we also have reverse iterators. So iterators can be bidirectional. Uh, they can be, they're not always. It depends on your data structure. So in this case, uh, for arrays, we do have bidirectional iterators. So we can use this R begin and R end instead of begin and end. And this R begin and R end just stand for reverse begin and reverse end. So let's say I want to walk through my array, but I want to go from the last element to the first element. So I want to print out, say, um, you know, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but instead I want to print out 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Right. Well, I can just use reverse iterators. And again, I can very intuitively think about this. So I can say, you know, auto IT, so my iterator, uh, is going to equal r begin, right? So in this case, r begin points to the last element, right? Um, just like begin points to the first element, r begin points to the last element. And then we say, well, it is less than r end. In this case, r end points to one before the first element. So just like uh, normal end points to one past the last element, r end points to one before the first element. And again, we do this uh, while the iterator is less than R end because we don't want to access one before the first element, right? That's an invalid spot. So we want less than R end. And then again, this IT++ basically just says, move the iterator over one spot. But now we don't need to worry about, you know, whether we're decrementing or we're incrementing. When we use reverse iterators, it's all taken care of for us. So we can intuitively just say, go from the reverse begin to the reverse end and move it along by one. So in this case, it'll print out that array, but backwards. Okay, we can even have a more C style loop. So we're still using uh, a little bit of C++ style here. So we're using auto types again, and I have this zero U, and this just says that it's an unsigned number. Uh, you'll get a complaint. Um, you'll get a complaint if you don't have, say, the unsigned number there, where it'll say uh, comparison of integer expression of different uh, signedness. So one's an int. And then the standard uh, array size type, right? So you could use uh, this U directly just to say, hey, it's an unsigned, so don't compare an unsigned number with a signed number. A signed number is just a number that can be positive or negative, and an unsigned number is one that's always positive, right? Um, you could also say, you could explicitly say, you know, I want this to be the size T type instead, right? And that'll get rid of that warning. But we can also just use auto types and just tell the value to be u, right? Because if you just use auto i is equal to zero, it'll assume that, oh, it's an integer, right? Uh, so if I go ahead and get rid of this u, you see it'll say, you know, hey, you're comparing an int with a std array, you know, int um, size type. So just add that back in, right? But it's still very much C style because now we're really doing this, you know, indexing 
And so we'll just use another method from the array, which is this a1.size, which basically says how many elements are in the array. So for, you know, when we have, say, five elements, right, a1.size will return five, right? So still, you know, a little bit uh, less safe, right? Just because we don't have the intuitive begin and end. Now we're working with the actual numbers, um, but not too bad, right? Because we're saying, well, i is less than the size, right? So we're making sure we're not uh, overreaching in the size. Um, and then we just do i++ plus plus, and then we directly index down here based upon the value of i. And then we'll just go ahead and print out, and this will print out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But then we can have, uh, so just because you'll see this a lot, we'll go over, you know, the normal kind of uh, classic C style loops. So in this case, right, with the C style loop, like we said last time with uh, vectors, vectors don't have, uh, or rather, we went over arrays. Arrays don't have any information associated with them. It's just storage, right? When we're talking about the C style arrays, not the actual standard template library container, std array or std colon colon array, which we're using up here, um, which we have, uh, we're, so we have to include array for that. And then I've got using std array, so I don't have to write a std array for every single instance. Okay, but for the C style array, Again, we do it like this. So we'll say I want an integer, right? I'm going to call it C underscore A, and it's going to be an array of integers. So I've got these brackets. Um, and in this case, I don't need to say how many I want because I've got this initialization list right here. So it's going to automatically be deduced to say be five, but I have to manually keep track of this, right? I can't call, you know, C underscore A dot size, right? Because it's just storage. So I'll keep track of the storage right here as N is equal to five. Kind of the classic way of writing a for loop is you'll do, you know, for int i is equal to zero, or maybe for unsigned i is equal to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, and then you print out just by normal indexing. So let's kind of go over the you know basics of this again and why do we care about these different styles. So in many cases, the most intuitive thing we can do is a range-based for loop because I just I don't need to know anything about the size of the array. I can just say I want all the elements inside of a1. And I'm going to associate, I'm going to reference them as I, right? So I'm going to refer to them rather as I. And I can just print them all out. You know, re really easy, really hard to mess up. Okay. Then over here, if we need a little bit more control and we don't want to say print every element, we can play around with it using the iterators and we can use begin and end. So still very safe because we've got a definite begin and a definite, definite end. Uh, if we need to do things in backwards, we can still stay safe with iterators and we can use our begin and our end. Uh, if we have bidirectional iterators, um, we can even do, uh, we can use an explicit size comparison as well. So a little less intuitive because we don't have this nice begin and end and we're no longer using iterators. We're using unsigned numbers here uh, and we're manually indexing. And then we have the most unsafe one and really the one that's just classic C style, which is a normal C array. So not std array from the C++ standard template library. So let's go ahead and compile this and see how it works. So we'll just do G++ um, for loops dash O, and then I'll call my output just for loops without the .cpp. I don't want to overwrite my source file. All right, and you see I've got this green executable, and we'll run it. We see the range base, we print everything. With the iterators, we print everything. We can use the reverse iterators to print things in reverse. Uh, using explicit size comparison, right, we can do the same thing. Uh, as far as printing all the numbers. And then we can also you still use the classic C style, right? That's a bit more discouraged when we're talking about C++, right? We have all these nice tools in terms of, you know, iterators and range by for loops. And from and in most cases, there's no performance difference between using a C style array and using a range based for loop. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. So that's the basics of for loops uh, and using them with, uh, you know, a standard template library container like an array. But there's many, uh, there's many other containers that we can use them with. And we'll talk about more containers like vectors in another video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. And it's under the C++ crash course, right? So we've got uh, under fundamental concepts and under control flow. You can see we've got this for loop example that we looked with to, uh, looked at today. So feel free to look at this, give me a shout if there's any particular topic that maybe you're unsure about or would like covered. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.